Bonjour à tous. Euh, bon, désolé pour le, le petit échange avec Ziv. Euh, un petit, quelques petits détails à régler euh, pour le avant le démarrage de, de sa presse. Euh, bon, Est-ce qu'il est, qu est vraiment encore nécessaire de présenter euh, Ziv Zuraski euh, À moins que vous, ayez, euh, vous, so vous, ayez, vous soyez resté endormi pendant les dernières 25 dernières années. Euh, on peut dire que Ziv a été... Euh, euh, impliqué de façon constante dans le, dans le développement du langage hein, PHP, euh, parce qu'il a donc co-créé PHP 3, euh, qui est considéré comme la première version moderne du langage PHP. Euh, donc, en fait, on peut dire que si Ziv n'avait pas été là, euh, ben, en fait, on ne serait pas en train de parler de PHP actuellement et, euh, les, et Internet ne serait pas ce qu'il est aujourd'hui, clairement. Euh, donc, Ziv euh, était le cofondateur euh, et le CTO de Zend pendant des années. Euh, Aujourd'hui, il ne fait plus partie de Zend depuis, depuis à peu près un an. Il est le CTO d'une petite startup qui s'appelle Stratic, euh, qui est une société qui, euh, en gros, qui va sécuriser et améliorer les performances de sites WordPress en les... En les euh, rendant statique et avec des déploiements serverless. Voilà. Euh, donc, euh, Ziv est là pour nous parler de, euh, des 25 dernières années, ce qui s'est passé dans les 25 dernières années dans PHP, euh, et, euh, et nous aider à voir un peu l'horizon euh, du futur de PHP. Euh, donc, euh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ziv Zuraski. Ziv, the scene, the stage is all yours. Merci. Uh, yeah. Hi everyone. Unfortunately, this is as, as close as I can really get to Paris for now. Just a, a fake background. Um, so let me get me started here. Okay. So uh, thanks for the introduction. I'm going to give you a tiny bit of more background about me, uh, and, and then get started with uh, our topic. Um, so I'm the father of three daughters. Uh, As I've been saying for years, it gives me an excellent uh, excuse to play with uh, PHP elephants uh, in you know uh, ways that otherwise I may not may not have allowed myself. Uh, I'm when we are in normal times. I really love traveling and I love photography, and this is kind of how I often travel and with lots of cameras. Um, I am really into spicy foods in levels which are somewhat crazy even. This is like a dream shot. Unfortunately, I never got to be in such a place, but one day, maybe. Uh, I started programming since the age of 12, which I guess is kind of late uh, in this day and age. My daughter started programming at the age of seven, so I was late to the game. But back then in the 80s, I think that was considered early. And finally, uh, of course, the reason that we're all here is uh, that I'm one of the Uh, folks who created PHP uh, and has been one of the principal developers of PHP for many years. And what I would like to talk to you today about is um, a look back at 25 years of PHP and specifically not so much uh, for you know historical lesson, but also but, but try to look at the things we uh, did well, I think the thing we did maybe not so well, and then at the end try to give a bit of a guesstimate on what's, uh, what's up ahead. Uh, I'll try to go quickly and not too quickly, so I'll be understandable, and hopefully there'll be a bit of time for questions at the end. So let's begin by the things that I think we got right when we created PHP and when, as we developed it over the years. The first uh, topic that, or the first element that I think we really put emphasis on and uh, invested a lot into and was really a design goal for us was simplicity. Um, from the get-go, we wanted to create a version, a, a language that was simple. And what I mean by that is that we never were into clever syntaxes where, you know, you have uh, things like, We're calling back in the day in Perl, uh, where 
the syntax is very uh, maybe creative. Uh, it may, be, may give the developer some sort of a warm, fuzzy feeling that they manage to create this nice looking uh, piece of code that is working. But at the same time, it's uh, not very uh, easy to understand, not very readable, uh, and also not necessarily very easy for new developers to understand the, the, the syntax. At the same time, you also try to be kind of minimalist uh, in terms of the features we uh, added. We didn't want PHP to be an everything in the kitchen sink kind of language. We wanted to kind of keep the cognitive load down as much as, uh, as, much as possible while still um, giving the, the developers all of the uh, power and capabilities they needed in order to be productive. I've been asked many times over the years what, why I think PHP was successful, and I always had two main bullet points in, in my answer. One was simplicity, the other one we'll get to later on, but in terms of top reasons for the success of PHP, I think uh, that clearly ranks very, very high. Um, another thing that, another kind of design decision, and I have to say, when I say design decision, this was very evolutionary. It's not, we, the, we never kind of sat in a room together uh, figuring out what we want PHP to look like. Uh, we, it, it's more of a looking back at what we did uh, in the early stages and uh, try to understand uh, what are, were the key tenets. So when we created PHP, uh, when we evolved from PHP 2 P, uh, to PHP 3, and, and back then the syntax changed kind of fairly significantly, um, we wanted uh, essentially at a, a very basic level to create a scripting version of the C language. Uh, I don't know how many people in the audience uh, are C users, my guess is, or C developers, my guess is not too many. So I'm not sure how much this resonates with you. But uh, back in the day, uh, we were C developers. Uh, that was our main language of choice. And we thought that it did things in a pretty nice way um, and um, uh, wanted to maintain a lot of the uh, philosophy uh, of the language, but at the same time, make it a lot easier to use, a lot more accessible for developers. So we viewed for a long time, and I still, to some degree, uh, viewed the, the basic uh, building blocks of, of PHP um, as um, uh, a, a scripting version of C. And when I say scripting version, what I mean by that is that you don't have to worry about um, some of the most problematic aspects of C, which is memory management, uh, resource management, and things of the sort. PHP, with PHP, of course, you really don't have to worry about that. Um, now, of course, PHP did evolve. C is a very, uh, very powerful, but at the same time, a very simple language. Uh, when I say simple, <laughs> simple, I don't mean it's very simple to use, but it, it doesn't have that many uh, features. Um, at the later stage, uh, when we decided to bring in object orientation support, we actually modeled our uh, our uh, object-oriented model after Java. We didn't like C++ too much. So PHP kind of started as a, uh, as a scripting version of C and evolved to be a scripting version of C and Java when it deals with, uh, um, with objects. In both cases, the idea was to use a solid popular language uh, to, uh, as a model change a lot of things to make it simpler and do away with all sorts of things which made them difficult to use, namely memory management, resource management, and some other things that I'll get to later on. Typeless uh, or dynamically typed. This is, I think, today a much more controversial uh, um, tenet of PHP compared to what it was in the past. Um, and uh, it doesn't change the fact that dynamic typing was really a founding principle of, of PHP. This was really uh, a philosophy where uh, we believed that um, um, scalar types in the vast majority of cases are really an implementation detail for developers, and they shouldn't have to worry about them 
Um, in the same sense that what I just mentioned, in the same sense they shouldn't uh, be, have to worry about memory management in the vast majority of cases. Of course, there are cases where you do need to worry about memory management, and in the same way, there are definitely cases where you do care about the underlying type, but this is, in my opinion, was and still is, in most cases, the exception to the rule. Uh, and I think that the fact we did away with the need to differentiate between integers and strings, especially in the context of processing forms and, and, and string-based input, so doing away with uh, this uh, uh, distinction, uh, with this uh, separation between uh, numeric types and string types uh, and, and changing between them uh, dynamically was a key factor in PHP's success. Um, it's not just about getting the developer to start to hear about the, the, the language and uh, use, it, use it, but um, it's also about being able to retain them once they start using it and have the, that experience that they're, they're having uh, be a positive one. Um, so on the dynamic uh, typing side of things, the main, our main influence was Perl. Uh, that's probably the only uh, influence uh, uh, we uh, had from uh, from Perl. Uh, we didn't like it so much in terms of uh, the, the syntax, but we did think that um, the um, uh, dynamic typing part was done in a pretty nice way and modeled our dynamic typing in many ways after it. Now, that part is kind of less about uh, the syntax itself and more about the overall experience. PHP, and we have to go back uh, 20, 20 plus years, uh, this was an era where you didn't have too many choices of uh, um, you know, web languages to, to use. And um, uh, the ones you did have were typically not necessarily very uh, didn't necessarily have a very positive out of the box experience. So I mean, going back then, I mean, back to to the late '90s, we're talking about ASP, which was okay, but um, it was very Windows centric, and the vast majority of uh, folks who wanted to develop web, web applications uh, were not uh, Windows users, definitely not Windows Server users. Um, and other alternatives, I think that the quid of the web back then was Perl. So mod Perl, for those of you who, who remember, uh, it's kind of ancient history now. Um, that was the way to uh, use Perl, um, Perl scripts in the web environment. And it wasn't very easy. I mean, I think today we take for granted the things that PHP does for us, not just memory management within um, the execution of a single script, but also you really don't have to worry about uh, leaking memory. Uh, I'm sure that some of you may not even know what that means to, to have a memory leak because it's it's really not an issue with PHP. It takes care of memory management for you altogether. If you don't free up a resource, it will free it up automatically for you. All of those things which we take for granted, and rightfully so to a large degree, um, were not uh, something that you could uh, rely on on most other platforms that were available back then. So the fact that PHP kind of just worked, it was fairly easy to get it to build into um, uh, as an integrated part of Apache, uh, and then just put uh, a source file in the right place and it, it's executed. That was uh, that was pretty novel at the time, and I still think it's uh, it, it's an important element of PHP even today, even comparing to. Uh, to other con modern contenders like Node.js, the fact that you can just put a piece of code in the right place and it just executes, and that uh, you know different pages are isolated from each other, that is still, in terms of simplicity, simplicity um, in usage, it's a very, very powerful feature. Performance. Uh, performance for PHP was a journey. Uh, it started at a pretty low point. Uh, I, uh, I believe in the introduction, it was mentioned that I, I uh, was involved, started getting involved in PHP since version 3. So version 3 was uh, about two to three times faster than, um, uh, than version 2 at the time. It was based on really sophisticated, all sorts of sophisticated, 
um, uh, subsystems that we added in order to cache all sorts of things, it was still horrendous. Of course, uh, at the time that we developed it, we thought it was state of the art. But uh, fairly quickly afterwards, we realized that it was actually pretty bad. And we started working on what was to become the Zend engine. And that was the beginning of a very long journey, a journey that is still continuing today. Um, and uh, um, a, a journey where we improved gradually the performance of PHP while retaining the functionality and Darwin's compatibility uh, of the language. Um, and we managed to, as I'm sure most of you, if not all, know, we managed to improve the performance steadily. Uh, PHP 4, of course, was with the Zend engine, the first version to, version to use it was anywhere between 50 to 100 times faster than version 3. Uh, it has to do primarily with the fact that version 3 was just so bad. Uh, so it was relatively easy to get it to, uh, to perform so much better. But that didn't stop the, then. Uh, we, we continue to invest heavily in performance. I, in the future world, I think we take it almost for granted that new versions work faster than previous versions. It's not very common in the industry. Uh, I mean, you, you can look at uh, uh, at other uh, pieces of software, whether it's Android or iOS or other languages. They don't usually become faster uh, with uh, with time. They, it's actually usually the opposite. Uh, they they uh, become slower, more bloated, more features are added, which uh, get it uh, to to go slower. And I have to say, it's not something that is an inherent, um, uh, it, 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 was, it didn't have to be this way. In order for this to be this way, we had to always heavily invest in performance. PHP 5 that came out, it wasn't that much faster than 4, but it was uh, roughly the same speed with a lot more features. And then in 5.1, 5.2, and throughout all of its life cycle, we improved it gradually with every release. Every release was faster than the previous one. And then, of course, we had version 7 that uh, more than doubled performance. Um, again, this is didn't just kind of fall out of the blue, come out of the blue. Uh, we, we basically um, almost invented the runtime engine, uh, in, in or at least substantial parts of it, in order to get that. And and of course, we have PHP 8 uh, right on the corner, which has the JIT engine uh, that uh, um, I'll talk about later on in, in, a, in a slightly bit more detail. But uh, it's another uh, demonstration of our commitment to improve performance uh, as much as we can. Um, compatibility, that's, uh, and, and more specifically, Darwin's compatibility, um, that's an, that was really another founding philosophical goal of PHP. Um, it was super important for us for, from the get-go to be the way we defined it to be user friendly. And we thought that most developers uh, appreciate spending their time on new functionality and less so on maintaining existing functionality. Uh, of course, uh, sometimes you have to maintain your existing functionality because there are issues, there are bugs, or you need to uh, add something into an existing piece of code. So that's fine. But we didn't want to force people to kind of audit their code and um, have to invest a lot of time uh, just in order to upgrade to the latest version of PHP. So uh, the Darwin's compatibility record of PHP is a pretty good one. Um, of course, there are exceptions to this rule. Uh, but for the most part, compatibility uh, was always a substantial, um, uh, a substantial consideration for us whenever we were talking about uh, both new features that could somehow affect uh, compatibility, but definitely also changing existing features or removing existing features. That doesn't come to say that we didn't do, uh, um, we didn't uh, have Downs compatibility uh, breaks. Uh, we, we, we definitely did. Maybe the some of the most notable ones are the switch from PHP 4 to 5, where we completely redid the object model. Uh, and we did that after a lot of deliberation and coming to the conclusion that uh, the object model that we had in PHP 4 and, and actually also 3 was, was really bad. And it's, uh, 
even to call it a model is a bit of an overstatement because it was ge generally just a, um, a different syntax for using AAs back in the day. Uh, and we thought that in order to really uh, make PHP friendly to the object-oriented community, and I have to say that um, this community, it was very clear that people who were using PHP uh, wanted to have uh, to, to use object orientation because most of the frameworks that uh, that were released for PHP four were using objects, and people there was a lot of demand for better object orientation. So we decided. Even though PHP 4 was already tremendously popular back uh, back then, we decided to uh, do a compatibility bake and change the object model. The good news about this particular compatibility bake is that um, people who, who didn't use object orientation, it didn't bother them. It basically, was completely uh, irrelevant for them. And the people who were affected by it are probably the people who got the best, uh, who really uh, were really happy about this new capability. So uh, it wasn't kind of a typical uh, compatibility package where you just uh, kind of grumpily uh, had to uh, uh, fix your code in order to stay in the same place. In this particular case, it was uh, a compatibility bake that, um, uh, that, that brought a lot of value Precisely for the folks who were uh, using objects, so I, I, I definitely think it was the right decision. Some other examples of com compatibility bakes that we did do are the 15 years ago already. The deprecation of safe mode and register globals, both features that we decided to remove simply because we reached the conclusion that they are creating um, a false sense of security uh, you know, with safe mode or making apps uh, just uh, making it too easy to create vulnerable apps. Um, and with all that said, those three examples that I just given, they were very much the exception to the rule. Um, compatibility was always very important for us, and we only decided to break it when there was really uh, an overwhelming case to to do that. And for the most part, I think that uh, this was another uh, important ingredient for the continued success of PHP. Uh, and even though probably compat the compatibility tech record probably didn't bring people to PHP, but I think it did help to keep them in this uh, ecosystem. Because when, when you bake compatibility, if you bake it too, too frequently, or if you bake things for no good reason, uh, every time uh, a company uh, has to upgrade to, the, to a later version, if, if the experience is very negative, it's always um, a decision point on whether to stick with, uh, with PHP, with the technology that they're using, or maybe take the opportunity to redo this in some other technology. So I think the fact that we didn't give people an excuse to uh, reconsider uh, the technology and made updates uh, straightforward and relatively painless um, managed to keep PHP as popular as it is. Last but not least uh, is the community. And going back to what I said uh, in, in, in the first uh, uh, slide about um, uh, about simplicity, this is the second bullet. Uh, this is the second ingredient for PHP's continued success. So if simplicity was the first one, the second one is doesn't have to do that much with the technology, uh, but with the people who are active in, in this uh, in the space, in this ecosystem. And I think we really managed to get that right. Uh, I can't take credit for it. I think to, in, in a lot of ways it just happened. Uh, but of course, uh, the, the influence of folks who were part of the project, who made it uh, uh, open uh, and made PHP itself um, uh, a language that is very easy to collaborate over, not just in terms of developing language engine itself, that's not all that easy, but in terms of sharing code, in terms of creating uh, or writing books, um, in terms of conferences like this one it's it's i think it's the uh, uh, 20th uh, form php uh, of course a very unique one unfortunately in those uh, unfortunate circumstances but we've been having um, community members 
um, that are creating uh, conferences, uh, very active on forums, on mailing lists, um, and, and uh, created applications and frameworks and open source them, which is not really needed. I mean, it's uh, not really needed in the sense that it's not mandatory. They could just use PHP for their own good, but something in the PHP DNA um, made it uh, very popular and almost natural to uh, also create open source software on top of it. And I think that the community around PHP is uh, clearly one of the key ingredients for its continued success. And in, in that sense, I think uh, all of you deserve credit for, for this. And now, uh, for, <laughs> for the more fun part, the stuff that I think we could have done better or that we didn't get quite right. Um, and I'll just get started. So the first thing is consistency. Um, PHP is not the most consistent language on the planet. Uh, and that's a bit of an understatement. And I think it has to do a lot with the way it was created. So uh, let's say, for instance, with function naming uh, and, and argument order and things like that, things that are still affecting us in 2020 in kind of the same way that they did 20 years ago, where did this come from? So I think it came from uh, maybe two main uh, directions. One is that uh, when we all have PHP 3, we made it exceptionally easy in relative terms to add more functionality to the language. Essentially, in order to uh, uh, take uh, a C library and make it available as uh, functions in PHP, the only thing you needed to, to do is write this thin layer of code, an extension, that would uh, link PHP uh, and this library. And it, it was very easy. But it was a bit of a double-edged sword, because basically, because it was so easy, um, a lot of folks created extensions, um, and they created them as those thin layers, um, which means that all of the inconsistency between the different uh, libraries out there, and of course, there are so many different libraries for C libraries that were made available uh, was supporting in PHP, all of the inconsistencies between them translated almost directly into, uh, uh, into PHP. So uh, if someone wrote uh, an extension for uh, MySQL My, My and someone else wrote an extension for, I don't know, for Oracle, um, instead of getting something which is more or less consistent, even just in terms of naming and argument order, um, they, they would uh, inherit the inconsistencies that were obviously uh, that obviously existed between um, OCI, the Oracle client library, and uh, my, the MySQL client library. To be honest, it's not the only reason because uh, because uh, uh, definitely there were some things that cannot be explained by that, uh, like you know the difference between I think split and explode and things like that. The reality of things was there was simply no standard. Um, for uh, um, uh, function A being for argument order in PHP. It was a bit of a wild west, and I, I think that's really unfortunate. I, I get it over the years that uh, we didn't, uh, were not smart enough or uh, kind of visionary enough to come up with guidelines early on. Uh, I would love for the, this is something that comes up every, every uh, few years. I would love for something to be done in that front, but uh, at this point, I'm not sure there will be the uh, uh, the, the, the energy to to try and fix something like that in a way that will not be like a catastrophic break for uh, existing code. Um, type handling. Type handling is something that I, I mentioned earlier, dynamic typing. Um, type handling is something which uh, I think we could have done better. Uh, and um, um, the, some of the juggling elements, I think we could have done a better job. Uh, the unfortunate reality from my point of view is that because we had some rough edges on uh, type juggling, that is probably the main reason that stricter and stricter typing are making it now into PHP, uh, which, like I mentioned, was really an uh, 
it really goes against the, the founding principle of PHP as a dynamic language. Um, uh, and uh, I, I'm, I, I'm kind of sorry that this, the strict type uh, support that exists in PHP is, I think, a lot stricter than it should be. And by the way, the the weak scalar time in PHP, I think, is weaker than it should be. So um, that was short-sighted to make it uh, to make a long story short. And definitely something that uh, in another life, if we started from scratch, uh, I would have uh, invested uh, more into keeping everything consistent. I still think that. The dynamic nature is is a good one, but we needed to just do a better job at at uh, handling it. Package management. Uh, I'm I'm slightly running out of time, so I'm going to go uh, a bit quicker. So package management is something that didn't exist for uh, the first decade or even 15 years of PHP, and it made collaboration uh, completely up to developers. Uh, there were not tools. There were no tools to really support them uh, in that sense, other than things like uh, uh, I don't know, SourceForge. Um, but luckily, uh, I think today in 2020, for the last uh, few years, uh, that's, th this was very much solved by Composer. And I think we have today a state of the art tool for package management and code collaboration. So that's something that we didn't get right, but that uh, the community managed to fix. Tools. Um, historically, PHP, like other open source languages, came out without any tools. You just need, used your uh, text editor to uh, to develop it. And uh, unfortunately, I think this was engaged into PHP's DNA, the, 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 the language's DNA and developers' uh, habits in a way that still affects us today. Uh, I think that even today, it's um, a bit too common to find folks uh, using uh, debugging complex projects and complex pieces of code using printfs and echoes, uh, and instead of using a debugger. Uh, even though I have to say that uh, uh, definitely a lot more people are using IDs today compared to the past, and of course the, the editors themselves are much better than uh, than uh, what they used to be, uh, and then all of them uh, come with at least basic PHP support. So again, here too, I would say that we started in a pretty uh, bad place. And today, we are in an OK place, maybe OK plus, uh, in terms of adoption of tools in the PHP world. Governance, wow, that, that's a big one. <laughs> I probably don't have enough time to uh, really dive into it. But I, I do want to give a, a quick uh, overview of, of where we were and how things evolved. So in the early days, you know, PHP very quickly became a project of just a few people uh, dealing with it and using it for their own purposes to something that is being used by tens of thousands and then hundreds of thousands and then millions of, of people with a lot of impact on um, the, the web development world in general. For the first uh, 15 years or so, um, the way that uh, governance worked was uh, very much through discussion over internals and uh, basically trying to reach consensus. Uh, it had advantages and disadvantages. One of the disadvantages is that if, if there was a, an issue where there was no, uh, no consensus on uh, and, and there were strong thoughts on, there could be some really long discussions uh, and uh, annoying uh, and, and kind of uh, <laughs> not very pleasant ones at that. Uh, but, the, uh, but in general, the goal, the, the idea was to um, uh, keep uh, the status quo unless there's consensus on changing it, whether it's um, uh, adding a new feature or even more so changing an existing feature. Now, uh, one of the disadvantages of that is that uh, it was really not very really well defined. Um, what, what does it mean to have consensus? Uh, and uh, who, who, whose opinion counts even in, into this consensus? So about 10 years ago, there was an initiative to formalize this uh, a bit more. Uh, and uh, the voting RFC was, was born. I'm not the one that I, I wasn't really a part of this initiative at the time, but uh, I, you know, 
became involved, uh, people asked me for, for my support, and then I ended up rewriting the voting LFC almost entirely. So what happened to a large degree is uh, I, I have to take responsibility for it because I wrote most of the voting LFC that, uh, that made this uh, change. And I think that um, what, what, what happened is that the voting LFC was uh, uh, written with a certain context in mind. It was written in the context that, uh, uh, that PHP is a dynamic language, that Darwin's compatibility is almost sacred, and uh, it was written in the context of adding new features to the language. What happened in practice, though, is that it, would, it slowly evolved, and within a few years, evolved to be perceived as the constitution of PHP, uh, as if this is the one way to, the, the only rule that kind of matters, and uh, that uh, anything, any decision, can be taken using this RFC, using a vote. Um, on, on top of that, it was short-sighted in the fact that, in how it codified consensus. Um, it, it codified consensus as two-thirds. Two-thirds is actually, at the time I thought it's, it's a you know, very substantial majority, but in reality, it can be very far away from consensus. Uh, two-thirds majority can mean that you, essentially means that you have two people in favor for every one person against. Uh, it could mean that f you have 30 people that are you know, opposing a certain idea, uh, which is a lot, as long as there are 60 people that support it, which was very, very different from the consensus-based uh, approach that we used in the past, where we would only uh, move forward if there was really a handful of people that opposed uh, uh, a, a, a certain idea, and ideally, uh, none at all. So this means today, fast forward to today, that uh, the kind of basic tenets of the dynamic nature, uh, downs compatibility, and some others are no longer sacred. They're no longer even really mentioned uh, anywhere. And any decision can be taken um, as long as it has a two-thirds majority. Uh, in, my, in, in my book, that's, uh, that's bad. Uh, I, I'm sure that there are a lot of people that like it, but uh, I'm, I'm sharing my opinion. The last thing I'm going to run through, through it because we really are out of time, async, uh, async support, the main reason, one of the main reasons, other than the fact that everyone knows it, but the main reason that Java, JavaScript sorry, is becoming so popular with Node.js is the async nature. PHP, uh, until uh, not too long ago, didn't really support it, supported that model. Um, it's another thing where I can say that today, with the introduction of Swole a few years ago, we do have a good solution for it. But I can say that we're kind of late, late to the game. So last couple of slides, trying to make some predictions about the future. So the first one is PHP 8. I don't need really a crystal ball for that one, because it's really right around the corner. But I want to try and explain what I think the input would be. So first of all, there's going to be JIT. JIT is going to uh, make. PHP viable for certain use cases where it was not viable before. Um, and uh, the unfortunate part is that in most cases, it will not speed up your existing web applications. You will have to, uh, it, it really depends on the app, but JIT will really be noticeable in CPU heavy applications. So do open the door for new workloads, but probably not uh, improve the lives of existing uh, applications too well. New features. There's a lot of new features uh, coming out in PHP 8, a lot of them related to stick typing, so not, not exactly my cup of tea. But in general, there's quite a lot of features in, uh, in, in PHP 8 that will make the lives of, uh, of users easy. Um, but the last part is Downs compatibility. And I think I, I'm personally kind of worried about uh, uh, this version. It's the first version, the first major version to come out sense can the, the, the change in philosophy in the uh, decision-making process of PHP that puts uh, um, backwards compatibility kind of at the, uh, at, and not, doesn't place it very high. Uh, it's the second, it's the first major version, sorry, to come out where this will be really noticeable, where changes, both changes and removals were implemented at a very, very wide scale. 
I'm already getting some early feedback from uh, from users and from projects that uh, upgrading to PHP 8 is going to be a major headache. Um, but we'll have to see about that. Uh, and, and that brings me to my very last slide, beyond PHP 8. I think what happens beyond PHP 8 will have to do primarily with what happens with PHP 8. If PHP 8 is successful as it, as it is, and it's quite possible, I. Like I mentioned, I don't have a crystal ball. It's quite possible that uh, people will transition and will perceive the uh, the computability bakes as uh, something that is worth the the bake, uh, worth the effort in order to get the, the new features, in order to get a stick to language, and will generally like a stick to language that is uh, less dynamic than uh, it used to be. It's possible that this will go in this direction. If that happens. I think what will happen is the feature will become less and less dynamic, more and more sick with uh, uh, with the versions with PHP 9 and beyond. On the flip side, if PHP 8 becomes a bit of a, uh, a flop in terms of uh, um, um, the upgrade uh, cycle, if people decide to stay back in, in, in PHP 7 for a long time because migration is difficult, uh, or if all sorts of bugs which are very difficult to find in uh, in, at the source level and have to be found in production. If some of those bugs uh, get high visibility because they bite uh, people uh, and, and kind of create uh, problems in the production websites, I think we may see uh, some going back to, uh, uh, to, to the previous uh, approaches. And of course, there's always the possibility of some sort of a middle ground. Um, Whatever happens, I think it will be. Uh, I think it will be interesting. Uh, and uh, whatever happens, we need to remember that the PHP uh, development team can still uh, act on it uh, and, and act on the feedback. So overall, I'm cautiously optimistic about the the future of PHP. Uh, I'm less optimistic about uh, my ability to take questions. So <laughs> if you have questions. Uh, feel free to send them to me. I'll see. I, I didn't look at the the um, at the online interface, uh, but uh, if there are questions, ask them. I'll try to answer them. Otherwise, you can uh, contact me uh, over my email, or over Twitter. And thanks all for the time. And hopefully next year, we'll be able to meet face to face in Paris. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much, Ziv, uh, for uh, for this uh, very interesting talk. Uh, unfortunately, we won't have uh, the time for uh, interactive questions. However, you you have like uh, five questions in in uh, in the tab. Uh, you will be able to uh, to write answers uh, just uh, uh, by uh, yeah on um, text text based answers. Uh, mm -hmm. So thank you. Even after the the webinar is closed, so. Uh, thank you all for uh, listening to uh, this uh, outstanding uh, presentation. And uh, well, now it's the pause, so um, uh, so I'm going to switch into uh, to French. Uh, C'est désormais la pause. Uh, pensez à aller uh, faire un petit tour sur Work Adventure. Je sais qu'il y a des sponsors qui uh, qui vous ont réservé quelques petites uh, quelques petites choses. Uh, Tombola, etc. N'hésitez pas à, à, à aller uh, leur rendre visite. Ils seront ravis de vous faire des petites démos, etc. Merci à tous. Thanks, Eve, and uh, see you later. Bye bye. See you. Bye bye.